Hello and welcome back to Physics of Music. So last time we were talking about the endeavor of physics, which is something where we observe the universe, we try to figure out the rules for how things are operating, and then once we've understood these rules, we can actually use them to do very powerful things like predict the future, predict what will happen based on what we can observe now. And last time, what I was saying is that in order to start to understand these rules, it's simplest to think about the rules of physics in the simplest possible environment. And that's an environment far away from any other objects. So we want to think about the physics in deep space away from any stars and planets. And I showed a simulation. I'll just give you a version of that now where we imagine an object that's out in deep space and we want to visualize what that object might be doing. And so basically this is the most complicated thing that you're going to see for some say spherical object out in space. You would observe this object moving in some direction. That direction is going to be fixed. The speed is going to be fixed and the object might also be rotating and if it's spherical, that rotation will be about a fixed axis and it'll happen at a constant rate. And so in terms of describing the physics out in this simple environment, then basically at any moment in time, we can describe the object by its position, by its velocity, that is its speed and the direction that it's moving by the way that it's oriented in space and by the way that it's rotating. What is the axis that it's rotating about and what is the period or frequency of this rotation? And so when we're talking about predicting the future, what we want to do is predict what these quantities are going to be at some future time based on our observation of what they are now. So the rules that we're going to use in order to make these predictions are the ones that I described in the video. Rule number one has to do with the overall motion of the object. It's going to be moving at a constant speed in a fixed direction. So this rule is actually what's usually known as Newton's first law. This was one of the big breakthroughs that Isaac Newton made was to realize that naturally objects want to keep moving and they want to keep moving in the same way that they're moving. And I think the reason why this was such a breakthrough is that that is not really what we observe here on Earth. Typically here on Earth, when things start moving, well, they stop eventually. And so the idea that if you take away the interactions with everything else, if you just imagine objects out in deep space, then they're going to keep going. Well, that was a real breakthrough. Nowadays, we have a much easier time imagining what it might be like out in space because we've seen lots of science fiction movies, but also actual video of astronauts in, in the space station playing with things. Okay. The other rule has to do with the rotational motion of an object. And in the slightly simpler case where the object is assumed to be spherical, then the rule is just that there's a fixed rotational axis and the object rotates at a constant rate. So I want to do a couple of examples now where we're going to use these rules to make a prediction. So here's a question to think about. Suppose we have our object again, far away from anything else. This ruler here is just imaginary just to show us some distances that we could use to give a precise description of the motion, what we're given is that at some time, two seconds on a clock, the happy face object is at position two centimeters along this ruler and it's moving along the direction of the ruler to the right at a speed of 1.5 centimeters per second. And so the thing I want you to predict is where will the object be along the ruler at time four seconds? Okay, so pause the video, work it out, and then we'll discuss that. Okay, so this is basically really straightforward. 
as long as we understand what this the speed means, what the definition of speed is. And so we just have to remember that the speed is the distance that you move per time or turning that around, we can say that the distance traveled is just the speed of the object times the time elapsed. If you're driving at 30 kilometers an hour and you drive for two hours, then you go 60 kilometers. 30 times two is 60. In this case, the speed is 1.5 centimeters per second. The time elapsed is two seconds because we're going from time two seconds to time four seconds. And so the distance traveled is 1.5 centimeters per second times two seconds or three centimeters. Since the object starts at position two centimeters, then the new position is going to be two centimeters plus three centimeters or five centimeters. So we've managed to predict the future given the information about where the object is at the original time and what, how fast it's moving. We've managed to make a prediction for where this object is going to be out at, um, at uh, time four seconds or two seconds into the future. And we used the rules for physics in outer space or physics when you don't have any other interactions with other objects. So now I want to be a little bit more precise about the idea of velocity and how that differs from speed. So the speed of an object is, is just some positive number. It's the distance that you travel per time. In, when we talk about velocity, the concept that I want to talk about specifically is the velocity, sorry, in a particular direction. So we could have the velocity, we could have an object say moving up and to the right, and we could talk about its velocity in the direction to the right, or it's a velocity in the upward direction. Okay, so velocity, the, the idea of velocity in a certain direction, um, it gives us more information about the motion of an object. So the definition of this is going to be that the velocity in some direction, say the vertical direction, is the rate of change of position in that direction or the change in position in that direction divided by the change in time if it's moving at some uniform rate. So I want to do just a couple of examples to kind of clarify this and distinguish it from the notion of speed. Okay. So speed is one example of the definition that I just gave. If the direction that I choose to look at is the direction that the object is moving in, then the velocity in that direction is the speed. So in this, in this example, this object is moving down and to the right. We see that it travels five meters in one second. And so its velocity in its direction of motion, or in other words, its speed is five meters divided by one second or five meters per second. But let's look at a slightly more interesting example. So now I'm going to talk about the velocity in the direction to the right. In physics, we often give directions, names like the x direction or the y direction or the z direction. And so I'm gonna call this the x direction. It's just a, a label that we give to this particular direction that is to the right in our picture. And so our question is, what is the velocity in the x direction? Okay, so this time we're again going to apply the definition. And so it's the rate of change of the position along this x direction. And so what I've done is put down this kind of imaginary grid showing the various locations along the x direction. So all of these points along this vertical line here we'll say that those are at position zero in the x direction. And then here's position one, two, three, four, five. And so if we wanna just keep track of the motion along the x direction, then we look at how far does it move horizontally to the right. And we see that at time zero, it's at position two. At time one second, it's at position six. And so the change in the x position is four meters in the time one second 
and so the velocity in the x direction is 4 meters per second. As another example that you can think about, we could calculate what is this object's velocity in the y direction. And so take a moment and pause the video, work that one out, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so this one is slightly more subtle. We're going to basically do the same thing as last time, but there's a bit of a twist. So the y direction is defined to be the upward direction. And I've labeled various positions in the y direction. These are like heights, zero meters, five meters, 10 meters. And so again, we're going to apply the definition of velocity in the y direction. And so we want to look at the change in the y position over some period of time and divide by that elapsed time. So again, it'll be simplest to go from zero seconds to one second. And what you notice is that during that period of time, the object goes from position eight meters along this y direction to position five meters along the y direction. And so the change in position is actually negative. It's minus three meters. And so the velocity along this upward y direction is going to be minus three meters divided by one second or minus three meters per second. So the answer to this question was D. So this was the important point that I really wanted to emphasize with these examples. That is that when you're talking about velocity along some direction, that direction that has, has a particular or that we usually specify a particular uh, sign for that direction, in this case, upward. And so the velocity can either be positive, which means you're going in that direction, or negative, which means you're going the opposite direction. Okay, so if you're talking about upward velocity, then something moving up is going to have a positive upward velocity. Something moving down will have a negative upward velocity. So using that concept of velocity in, in a particular direction, we can state rule number one for the motion of objects without interactions in a slightly different way that's going to be useful for us. Okay. So equivalent to saying that objects move at a constant speed in a fixed direction is saying that the velocity of an object in any direction is constant if, it, if it's not interacting with anything else. And so you can see that, for example, with this object, this is the same as in our last examples. It's moving to the right at four meters per second, while at the same time moving downwards at three meters per second, or moving in the upward direction at minus three meters per second. Okay. And so that means it's going to go four, four units of distance to the right every time it goes three units of distance down, and so that's going to go in this particular direction. Okay, so these are the rules for physics in outer space. And what we're going to do in the next video is actually go a little bit deeper and understand why these rules are true. So it turns out that there's some beautiful physics underlying those two rules that help us understand where they come from and why objects actually behave in this way.